Today we're going to be looking at more practical implementations of the Doherty power amplifier. And just like the Shirey amplifier, the Doherty can be too large for practical integration, and that's because of these quarter wave transmission line elements. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do uh, is try and figure out ways to miniaturize the Doherty. So one way that we can miniaturize it is to go to higher frequency. And of course, the reason we go to higher frequency is that our TL, our quarter wave TL, is shorter. And if you look for papers by a guy named Patrick Rainier and JSSC, you'll see a couple of implementations of Doherty power amplifiers and the 60 degree ballpark. Of course, he's still not using quarter wave transmission lines, he's using transformers. But nonetheless, it's one way that we can actually make the Doherty amplifiers smaller. Another way that we can do it is using lumped TL equivalent. And of course, this is where we have our CLC structures. And of course, our characteristic impedance is equal to root L over C. And the final way, and the one that we're going to look at a little bit more closely, is by using what we call polyphase filters. Okay, so what's a polyphase filter? Well, a polyphase filter is a filter that provides quadrature outputs from one differential input. So here we put our input signal in and we'll call this a differential input signal. So we're using both the positive and negative terminal of the input source. And if we size these R's and C's appropriately, and of course, all R's and all C's will be identical in this structure. And of course, I need one final C that wasn't included. To close the loop, we size these things appropriately. We're going to get a Q minus phase, an I plus phase, a Q plus phase, and an I minus phase. And what this means is that the signal will have the following phasing. The Q minus will be minus 90 degrees. The Q plus will be plus 90 degrees. The I plus will be zero degrees. And the I minus will be 180 degrees. So you see that what we're getting at the output is quadrature signals where we have a differential in phase component, zero and 180 degrees, and a differential quadrature component 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees. Now all of the amplitudes are the same at the output, but the phase delays are different. Now one problem that this has is that it's lossier than a transmission line. And another issue that's going to be seen is that mismatch between the R's and C's will cause phase errors. So how do we pick the R and C values for our polyphase filter? Well, it's basically just a pole frequency. So we have a center frequency that we're trying to design for. It's equal to 1 over 2 pi times RC. We choose a practical R. And then calculate C for our operation frequency. How do we use this in a Doherty power amplifier? Well, we can send 
the zero degrees and 180 degree signal to differential inputs of our main PA. And we send our 90 degrees and minus 90 degrees to the differential inputs of our auxiliary PA. Okay, so we'll draw what that implementation looks like. Here's our polyphase filter. We have our original input signal. It's differential going into the filter. And out of that filter, we get our I plus and I minus, and our Q plus and Q minus. And we would have differential inputs to our auxiliary PA and to our main PA. Now out of our main PA, we have our quarter wave delay element. We could use the lumped uh, uh, approximation uh, for this one. But you can see that the polyphase filter at least got rid of one of the transmission lines that we might have had to use. Now, in the original Doherty power amplifier, this, both of these amplifiers, the main amplifier and the auxiliary, were class B. But an improvement that can be made to the architecture is to make the auxiliary PA a class C amplifier. What's a class C amplifier? A class C amplifier is a normally off state power amplifier. So we're going to bias the PA so that it's normally off and only conducts when the signal at the input is large enough. And in the next section of notes, we'll look at what a class C amplifier looks like.